Okay, so right now we're in my new house. So we got this as a rental property. Right now you can see that the uh, heater is working, it's on. Everything's blowing, everything's good. This thing was not working and uh, I suspect it is the problem with the thermostat upstairs. And the way I determined that was I traced the wires down and the uh, thermostat sends a 24 volt on signal through the red wire, which is returned right here. You can see that little nut is off of that red wire. And the white wire is going right up here. It wasn't coming on at all. But what I ended up doing was shorting. Let's see if everything's, I think it's blowing out. It should be. Yeah, it's cold in here. It's like 50 something degrees and my wife brought it to my attention. Uh, I just got this on here as a magnet. I got this on here as a magnet to hold this jumper wire on. Um, but you can see I've jumped it between, I don't know, you can't see, can you? Sorry, but if you could see, you'd see I jumped it from W, which is the white wire, to the R, red wire. And if you jumper those two, that completes the 24 volt uh, circuit line that goes back down and allows the thing to come on. So this is the problem. This is not telling, for whatever reason, uh, the thermostat is not doing its job. It's not telling the line to close and send that 24 volt signal. So I'm gonna take this over uh, and open it up and see if I can't figure out why that, see if I can't fix this thermostat. If I can, I'm gonna have to order another one, which is just, you know, yay, the joys of home ownership. <laughs> But you should hear it. I don't know if you can hear it right now, but if you listen downstairs, you hear it's on down there. And if I take the wire off, that shuts it down. So uh, I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna let this run for a little bit and warm it up in this house. Uh, because you know it's getting to that point of, of the year where it's kind of cold i'll kind of have to do it manually <laughs> i'll have to be the thermostat so let's see i should go right there there and that completes the cycle and turns it back on yeah that is just a big 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 pain in the butt um but yeah thank god for youtube man thank god for uh <laughs> for the resource you know because uh, i looked up the solution on youtube and so that's really good i'm uh, really glad to have gotten the good problem at least uh identified So, okay, but anyway, I think I have a pretty good grasp now, at least, of what, how one of these furnaces sort of works, um, where I, as I had no, I had no idea, you know, I would have just usually called somebody before I bought a home, you know, I would have called somebody to do this stuff, but now that I know a little bit about it, I know what to look for, I know how to troubleshoot, at least to narrow down the problem. Now, you know, am I going to get in there, am I going to replace, uh, you know, the whole furnace or anything like that if the thing goes down? No, I'm going to call somebody to do that. But, you know, for the small things that I can reach and that I can troubleshoot, at least I'm going to be able to do that. Here we are inside of this thing. And I don't see anything obviously burned or anything like that that I can just tell right off the bat. There is a relay here that I think does the switching. Um, we do have a capacitor, and that's as old as this unit, so I don't know, you know, that could be dead. Uh, we do have some contacts here, though, and you can see I've kind of scraped and clean these off and these two over here have not been clean and then we got the common over here way over here uh, you know and those have to be clean and they also have to be touching so you know if you notice a couple of these are kind of pushed in a little bit more than the others and I'm wondering if maybe it's not getting good contact and that's why you know there's because I hear a switch like if you turn this thing uh, to heat well, right now the batteries are out, but if you, when you turn it from off to heat, you do hear a switch. So it sounds like it's doing something. Um, 
but that could be why it's not doing something. It could be that the contacts are bad. So let me, uh, let's do this. Let's put the batteries back in. First, before I do that, I am going to um, clean both of these contacts and I'm also gonna push them outward just a little bit. Okay, so batteries are back in. Uh, looks like it's heated up a little bit in here, so that's good. And it's saying heat on. Let's turn it off and you can see what I hear. Okay. Now the switch should have gone off there. Now let's turn it back on, you should hear the switch. You hear the switch. So now it should be calling for heat because the heat is set higher than this number. So, okay, now I'm gonna measure the ohms between uh, this contact over here. It's gonna be hard to do and film at the same time, but I'm gonna measure the ohms between this contact and the one uh, over here that I should see continuity at. All right, so I think the takeaway from this is even if the thermostat looks and acts and sounds like it's, uh, you know, doing the right thing, it may be faulty. Uh, because, you know, once again, if I, uh, if I put this to heat, it does click. It gives me a nice little reassuring click. It tells me the heat's on, but, you know, nothing happens in the house and therefore you start to suspect something's wrong with your furnace. So you call the guy out and all the, that all, everything that comes along with that and only to find out that it was just your thermostat and you could have bought the thermostat and replaced it your damn self. So, I mean, this might save you uh, some money. So that's, that's an easy way to check it. So it's an easy way that I found out to check it. So hopefully that helps somebody else.